next few weeks we'll be preaching a series that we've entitled simply Thrive. Have you ever felt like you were operating in survival mode? In, in survival mode, we're just simply going through the motions. Survival mode is a place without passion. It's a journey without joy. Even going to work is a challenge. As one of those groups saying, we're just living for the weekend. Overwhelmed by stress. Simply to be in survival mode is to be stuck. But I've come to say to us today that it is not God's desire for believers to simply survive. He wants us to thrive. To thrive means, to thrive is to find meaning and joy in everything. It was Jesus who said, I've come that you might have life and have it what? More, more abundantly. People who are surviving feel they have nothing to look forward to. People who are thriving look forward to everything. So today in the next three weeks, the objective of this series is to inspire believers to do four things. Today we want to talk about what it is to walk more intimately with, with God. Next week we'll talk about, we'll try to rediscover and embrace family values then we'll talk about practicing wise stewardship and we'll close with a discussion of caring for our bodies as the temple of the holy spirit so this month i want to help us to get our faith right i want to help us to get our families right I want to help you to get your money right and then we've got to get our hearts minds and bodies right amen so today we'll talk about faith and I want to lift Hebrews chapter 12 very familiar passage Verses 1 and, and 2 that simply says this. Wherefore, seeing that we are compassed about or surrounded with so great a cloud of, of witnesses, let us lay aside. Let's just say lay aside. lay aside. Lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus. Who is he? He is the author and the finisher of our faith. And since we're in the passion season, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set at the right hand of the throne of God. Now we're not sure who wrote Hebrews, but he begins verse 1 talking about this this crowd of witnesses. This 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 crowd of witnesses. It's it's an illustration of the Olympic games in the ancient Greco-Roman world where in the stands there are witnesses they are seated now where are they well they're in chapter 11 what we've called the hall of faith the people there in chapter 11 
are witnesses. Let's just say witnesses. They, they are witnesses, not spectators. Witnesses, not, not, not spectators. Even when you go to court, there are some people in the room who are witnesses, right? And then, it, it, but they won't, everybody won't get a chance to testify that some other folk who are just in there who might be spectators. Well, my dear, see, let me help you understand the difference. A spectator enjoys an event, but a witness has experienced the event. Okay, let me come a little closer to home. All right, if we were talking about tennis, most of us would be spectators. Spectators, but Serena Williams would be a witness. Well, well, when it comes to worship, the house ought to be filled with some witnesses. N not spectators, not folk who just came to enjoy an event, but some folk who came to experience an event. Where, where are the witnesses, the folk who know how good God is, the people who know what God can do, the people who know it was nothing but the grace of God that brought you to where you are right now. Why don't you tell somebody, baby, when I come to worship, I ain't no spectator. When I come to worship, I'm a witness because He's been too good to me. He's done too much for me to come in the house of prayer and sit down and fold my arms and cross my legs and wait on something to happen. Oh, but when I come into the house of prayer, I came up in here to set it out. I, 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 I know it's all right. Um, we are surrounded by witnesses you know they aren't just in Hebrews chapter 11 there's some witnesses on your road you having a bad day Ask somebody on your road how good the Lord is. <laughs> if it's rough right now, I promise you, somebody sitting behind you, somebody sitting in front of you has been there. They've done that. They've got the t-shirt. And I wonder if the, I'm trying to move on, y'all. If the witnesses would just tell me, baby, I don't know what you're going through. Don't know what's on your mind. But if you don't know how good God is, just ask me. You, you can't get into worship sweating a bill. And somebody on your own will tell you he paid all my bill. Okay. There, there, there are witnesses. Now, now let me tell you some things, two things about these witnesses. They were faith people. They were what? They were faith people. The phrase, look at Hebrews chapter 11, the phrase by faith is repeated at least 17 times. See, the value of faith is emphasized in chapter 11, verse 6, which says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Come here. Come here. Since I'm trying to help you get your faith right, I want you to understand this. Intimacy requires trust, and trust requires faith. All right? All right. Now, you can use that in another context, can't you? <laughs> I, I, all right, all right, I'm gonna say it one more time. Will you tweet it for me? I said intimacy requires trust, and trust requires faith. All right, let me help you understand the difference. Trust says, I believe you, faith says, I believe in you. Come here, come here. Now, I, I wasn't talking about no relationships, but I guess this will fit. Because it is difficult to believe a person that you can't believe in. 
Now, how do we get way over there? They, they were faith people. They were what? Faith. I didn't hear everybody. They were what? Faith. faith people. All right. Here's the second point. Here's the second point. I pray I don't get caught up here because I want to finish this sermon. But I got, I got a whole bunch of more pages to go. Not only were they faith people, they were fallible people. They were what? Fallible people. Come here. Come here. I want you to leave here today knowing that the people in the Bible were as imperfect as we are. And when I look in Hebrews chapter 11 and see what kind of folk made it. <laughs> All right, Noah got drunk, he made it. Abraham lied, he made it. Rahab sold her body, she made it. Moses killed a man, he made it. David committed adultery. He made it. Baby, I don't know why y'all sitting down. You ought to be honest, baby. I'm jacked up. But if they made it, I know I can make it. Let me give you a verse. Romans 3.23. That's a vacation Bible school verse. It says, all have sinned. Let church say everybody. everybody. See, cause see, see, some of y'all super saints got that wrong. Some of y'all super saints think it says y'all. Uh uh. It says all. Oh. Don't don't look now. Don't look now. But there's some sinners sitting next to you. There's some sinners sitting on your row. Uh, sinners sitting in your section come here baby there's a sinner sitting in your seat all have sinned can the church say me too Tell somebody, baby, we ain't got time to vote the house. We don't have time to call the roll. We don't have time to pass the mic. But just t trust me, baby, when I tell you I hadn't sinned today yet, but I know how sin is done. Don't quit bragging on what you don't do no more. I'm, I'm fixing to start some stuff. Uh-huh. See, some of the stuff you don't do no more, you can't do no more. Which is why Jesus says you don't have to do it manually, but if you do it mentally. Uh, all right, because see, I needed to hang out there. I needed to hang out there a minute because people are always quick to minimize their own sin and maximize the sins of other people. Listen, baby, maybe you didn't do what somebody else did, but it's a sin for you to be gossiping about what they did. I tried to tell y'all a couple of weeks ago, the only sins you can confess are your own. And if you ain't ready to tell your whole story, don't tell nobody else's story. If you ain't digging up the skeletons in your closet, don't you be trying to dig up the skeletons in nobody else's closet. If you ain't pulling the cover back on your family, quit trying to pull the covers back on other people's family. See, see, somebody's quick to call you and tell you where they saw your child, but they won't tell you they child was with your child.
And you know why I can preach like preach about sin the way I preach about sin? Because I realize y'all ain't but two kind of sinners up in here. There's the caught and the ain't got caught yet. So if you ain't got caught yet, you treat the folk who got caught the way you want to be treated when you get caught. Oh, pastor, I saw some of our members at the boat. You had to be there to see them. Oh, pastor, all the peaceful rest was at the concert. Negro, you were there too. I mean, they weren't streaming. I want you to know this because you ain't nobody got no room to be judging nobody. Now, there's enough wrong with you right now to go straight to hell. But for the blood of Jesus, but for the grace of God. Somebody up in here ought to say, baby, if you think I'm messed up now, you should have seen me 10 years ago. You should have seen me 20 years ago. If you think I'm messed up now, you should have met me before I met Jesus. What a wonder. Changing my life has been rough since Jesus came into my heart. This is a good time to praise the Lord for what you ain't no more for what she used to be but how good come on come on for god how good god's been to you how far god has brought you the stuff god delivered you out of you quit looking down your nose at other people hey, hey! need a minute go on do what you got to do this 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 my time I believe just from the way it feels up in here I believe it's some sinners saved by grace up in here I believe it's some folk who've been delivered up in here I believe it's some folk who've been set free up in here Uh, I, you, you don't have to come to the mic, but at least wave your hand. Y'all give me two, give me two or three minutes. I'm gonna let y'all go. 
Look around. Will you look around? Will you look around? Listen. The greatest of us. I said the greatest of us is as fallible as the least of us. That's why we can't judge folk who messed up. Have I got a witness? They may have missed it Monday, but you subject to act a fool Thursday. Come here. Some of these old school brothers might remember Mr. October, Reggie Jackson. Old school brothers, holler at me. And sisters who. Yeah, yeah. See, 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 the, see the young folk know LeBron. But there was this fella named Reggie, Reggie Jackson. Watch this. Reggie Jackson hit. 563 home runs. How many? 563 home runs. How many? But he struck out 2,597 times. Nobody goes to the Hall of Fame for striking out. Yeah. Baby, you ain't going to heaven because of what you did wrong. You're going to heaven because of what Jesus did right. Yeah. I'm fixing to upset your theology now. Because God and I, we, 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 we struggle with we struggle with this one. I said, God, they ain't going to believe me. God says, preach it. I said, you really, God? He said, yeah, yeah, preach it. You, you preached a whole lot of crazy stuff. They didn't believe no way. I said, God, you really want me to preach that? He said, yes. He said, I, I need them to know this. Watch this. Come here. Come here. God expects us to fall. But he also expects us to get up. You know when the newborn is trying to learn how to walk, you don't kick them out when they fall. When the baby is trying to walk, you don't put them in jail because they fall. You tell them, get up, try it again. Hey! Somebody over there said, I need a verse for that. I, I got one. Proverbs 24, 16. You ought to put it on your refrigerator. It says, though the righteous fall seven times. Okay, y'all missed the shout right there. It didn't say, though the unrighteous, because everybody expects the unrighteous to fall. Who expects the righteous to fall? The word says, though the righteous fall seven times, what happens? They rise again. Who sung that song? We fall down. But the difference is, we get up, and a saint is just a sinner. What? We fell down. We got to. There was a film, a, a British film in 1981, entitled chariots of fire y'all remember that one of the athletes featured in that film was eric little he's best known uh for winning the gold medal in in the 440 in the 1924 olympics but eric little won Another rather interesting race in 1923. I'm going somewhere. During a track meet, 
between Scotland, England, and Ireland. Eric Little fell to the ground shortly after the race began. Okay, hold on. I said he won a rather interesting race in 1923. So, so let's stipulate that he won the race. What happened? Who won? He won the race. Okay. But shortly after beginning the race, he fell down. And just laid there. He just laid there. Until he heard the officials and the crowd shout, finish the race. He got up. Overcame a 20 yard deficit yeah, yeah, yeah. to win the race. Yeah. 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 But why, Pastor Jones, did he just stay there when he failed? Come here. Eric Little lay there after he failed because he was under the impression that he was disqualified by his fall. He thought when he failed, it was over. He thought when he failed that he was out of the race. He, uh, he thought that when he failed, it was over for him. But thank God there were some people who said, get up finish the race that's what's happening in Hebrews 11 Moses says get up finish the race Noah says get up finish the race Rahab says get up finish the race yeah where my glasses I'm done, y'all. I'm going to have to finish this some another day. I'm done. I'm good. I'm good. If you don't hear anything else I say today, I want you to hear this. Though we fall down, thank God for the privilege to get up. Maybe you ought to tell somebody around you, baby. I don't know where y'all, but get up. Take advantage of an opportunity to come visit us at the Family of Faith. We love you. Be strong and be encouraged.